A lot of people learn to climb in gyms nowadays, which is a great place to get strong and people learn good face climbing technique. Um, a lot of gyms have artificial cracks, but people tend to avoid them because they're weird and painful and they're typically made out of some kind of coated concrete, which tends to be slippery. Um, so they're difficult to learn on, but I encourage you to try every chance you get. Um, when you're jamming in slippery rock, like happened to me the other day, it was unusually humid in Joshua Tree and I did have a jam slip, you'll get these typical round chunks of skin that come off, we call those gobies, and certainly you don't want that. Uh, you should tape your hands and practice anytime you get the chance to practice crack climbing. And we'll talk about how to tape your hands for crack climbing in another episode. Um, I wanna show some basic hand jams right here. A perfect hand jam involves slotting the meaty part of your hand, the heel of your hand in a crack, and then squeezing thumb and forefinger together, which fattens your hand, and hanging on the meat of your hand, really just hanging on your skeleton. I see a lot of people when they're learning trying to grip the edges of the crack with their fingers, but that's not an efficient jam. That's not really a jam at all. What you wanna do is fit your hand, or part of your hand, which we'll talk about, into the crack, expand your hand by squeezing, and hang down on it, or sometimes pull outwards on it. So there's a perfect hand jam right here, which I'll show you. This is perfect because I can get my whole hand in there and then all I have to do is squeeze thumb and forefinger together to fatten the heel of my hand and hang straight down or straight out on it. Notice I went thumb up. I prefer a thumb up hand jam for the following reason. The angle of my elbow here allows me to pull all the way up on it and reach for the next hold. Sometimes you do find a jam that fits your hand better thumb down, and that is still a really great hold. You can hang out and rest on that, chalk up, place a piece of gear, but when you go to make the next move, it's torquing your elbow at a really weird angle, and you can't move very far past it. So oftentimes when you get a thumb down jam, the next move is to get a thumb up jam right underneath it, pull that top hand out and move on from there. So that's a perfect hand jam. You're slotting the meaty part of your hand, just squeezing thumb and forefinger together and hanging down on the bones. You might wanna bring your elbow into the wall so you're pulling straight down as much as possible. Um, if it's a little thinner than that and you can't get your entire hand in there, we might call that a thin hands jam, and people don't tend to like that size as much because you're putting your knuckles right in there. It can be painful. That might be a really good size to tape for, and you end up having to work your fingers pretty hard. So it takes more strength to hang on a thin hands jam versus a perfect hand jam where you're really just hanging on the bones of your hand. Um, I could demonstrate a thin hand jam right there, for example. See how I'm only getting my hand in to the knuckles? And now I have to really squeeze with my fingers pressing that way and my knuckles that way. And it works, but it would be nice to have a good foothold at this point so I'm not putting all my body weight on there. What if it's bigger than that perfect hand jam? We would call that cupped hands. And again, that takes more strength. That perfect hand jam is so good because you're just hanging on your skeleton. That thin hand jam, you're squeezing with your fingers. And in a cupped hand jam, you're squeezing with your entire hand. And I can demonstrate that right here. See how the crack is too wide to actually slot the meaty part of my thumb and forefinger. So I'm really squeezing with fingers and palm, pushing my knuckles against that side and my palm and fingers against that side. I might tuck my thumb, depending on what else I've got. I might try for some kind of thumb catch. The thing to really avoid is just pulling with your fingers on one side of the crack. You wanna get in there, exert force against both sides of the crack and hang down on it as much as possible. Sometimes that means bringing your elbow in, bringing your whole body in. The more you can hang down on that jam, the better. Not so much of a resting stance. Use that jam, move past it, and then hopefully find somewhere where you can get that perfect hand jam that you can just hang out on. When you get good at it, you can do pull-ups on a perfect hand jam. It really does feel like a rest. So right here, my left hand is in about the widest hand jam I can manage. This is a cupped hand. 
Got my hand cupped, got the heel of my hand and fingertips against one side, outside of my thumb and back of my hand against the other. And I'm really twisting to hold that in there. That's quite strenuous. As it gets a little wider than that, I can get a less strenuous jam, more of a resting jam. That's a perfect fist right there. So what I'm doing to get that perfect fist is slotting my whole hand in there and then squeezing. And notice that my hand fattens a little bit as I squeeze so that the fleshy part outside my pinky and the fleshy part between my thumb and forefinger are making contact. I don't want to try jamming my fist like this because then I'm going to shred my knuckles. So like this, back of the hand up, soft fleshy parts making contact and I can hang on my bones. That's a pretty good resting hold. I can turn that upside down and go palm up also. Same idea outside of my pinky finger and between thumb and forefinger making on contact and I can hang on that. That's a good fist jam.